In this video, we are going to take a look at the automatic selection tools, or at least a few of them, that are in Photoshop 2020. So my name is Matt Klaskowski. This is November 2019. Adobe just announced some updates to Photoshop. They call it 2020, but um, there's some automatic selection tools in there, the object selection tool and the remove background option that we have. When you couple that with the select subject tool that we had before, it got me wondering, it got me wondering like, what's the difference? In a way, they all seem to do the same thing. There's, there's a couple of nuances about each one, but they all seem to do the same thing. It's an automatic selection. So I wondered once I really put a bunch of different photos at it and start to pixel peep and, and look at them a little bit more closely, what's going on? Which one should I be using? Which one shouldn't I be using? And I decided to record all that for you guys. This is not a masking tutorial. You're not gonna learn about selections and masking or anything like that. This is literally just me looking at about five or six different images with three different selections in each one and just giving you my thoughts on each one of those. There are other selection methods inside of Photoshop. I really won't be covering them in this because I consider these to be the three newest automatic selection tools. I will give you some thoughts toward the end about what I use, as well as if you check the description, there's some videos that will give you a little bit more information about making complex selections. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, before we get started, let me, I, I've got a photo open and I just wanna show you very quickly how I, I created this experiment. I basically duplicated a layer three times, Command or Control J. On one of those layers, I did the object selection tool, uh, similar to that, and then I just added a layer mask to it. So we end up with something along those lines. And then I just repeated the process. For another layer, I did select subject, and then I added a layer mask, and then for the other layer, I went into the properties panel, scroll down to the bottom, and did remove background. Remove background automatically adds a layer mask, so you don't have to do that step on there, but that's how I prepared this experiment to really compare three different versions of the same photo. And I'm just using layer comps up here in the layer comp panel to do it. So as, as our example here, you saw what the before photo looked like. So what I'll do is I'll run through my layer comps and let's zoom in and pixel peep a little bit. And as I just can run through, so that is the select subject that is remove background and that is the object um, selection tool. So object, select subject, remove background. Um, they, so one thing I, I am noticing, and you will find this carries through, is select subject and remove background are generally the same thing. That's what I'm finding in all these examples, that they do the same thing. The object selection tool seems to have grabbed more hair in some places. Um, you do have to know nothing is going to get the details. All right, None of these tools will select details. You gotta set your expectations ahead of time that they are not meant to select details. In fact, there's no tool out there that I, I know of that with one click will automatically select all the details, at least no good tool. But the whole point is, is it gets your subjects selected. From here, what you would do is you would go to your layer mask. I'm not gonna do a whole tutorial on it because um, there's a thousand of them on YouTube. They're all called the secret of hair selection. So just look for something that says the secret because it's all the secret. I probably even called one the secret of hair selection, but you would click on your mask. You would go to the select and mask dialog box. And, uh, and I'll usually do like a darker, um, dark, or actually on this one, I would do a white background because that's closer to the original. Take that second brush there, the refine edge brush, and then you would just go around and paint through the hair. I am doing here. Again, I'm not going to do full tutorial. I make sure I do have some tutorials on it. I'll make sure I link to them in the description or after the video here. Okay. So that's how you would get the hair. There's also a little thing in the output settings called decontaminate. Uh, that'll get rid of some of those colors in there as well. Anyway. So, so what we're looking for is a base selection, like what gets us closest fastest, right? And, you know, as opposed to just using what we could always do is just use the quick selection tool and then we would go in here and we would, you know, paint our selection and which can work in, in some cases, but I'm really comparing more the automatic one click selection tools here. So we're, uh, we'll, we'll kind of keep that in mind here. Let's go take a look at what we have next. Um, so I thought this was, uh, I thought this was interesting, this leaf here. So just to show you the original leaf, that's what it was on a textured background. I'll open up my layer comps and we can run through this one. So there's the object selection tool. There's select subject. There's remove background. 
I found that select subject and remove, remove background, or just we'll just call it select subject for now because um, they're the same thing from what I can see. Did a little bit of a better job. The object selection tool seemed to want to get rid of the shadow in some places, but it didn't do it across the board. So I found select subject worked a little bit better in this example here. As far as the edges go, fairly hard edged object here. They both did pretty good. All right, they, they, both, they both look good as far as the edges got selected that there actually wouldn't be too much work for us to do after something like this. Another one I thought was an interesting example was the turtle. So let's zoom in a little bit here and run through our different versions. So that's the object selection tool. That's select subject, that's remove background. So object, select subject, remove background. Another thing I'm noticing is the object selection tool will typically leave a little bit of a more jagged edge, but I don't know if that's it's just because it's following the edge and maybe the edge as the photo appears is a little bit more jagged. But what I did notice is if you look at it on a black background, it looks like the object selection tool is worse. It looks like select subject did better. If you look at it on a white background, which is what you would, if you were ever replacing this turtle's background, you would never put it on a black background. This was the original background, by the way. This is what we started with. You would never put it on a black background because it'll, it'll never look right. That's the first rule in compositing is, is you got to pick the right background. So you would put it on something bright. I actually found that the object selection tool did a smoother, more feathered selection along that edge. And you really got a pixel peep to see it, but versus the select subject tool where I noticed a harder edge around there. And in a video where you're watching this of the size of your screen or tablet or phone, you might not even be able to see it. But I thought the object selection tool did a more fine tuned selection on that edge. When you looked at it on a white background, when you looked at it on a black background, to me, it didn't look quite as good. All right, moving on down the line. Here's another one I thought was was interesting. So if you take a look at our before photo, that's what we started with. I deliberately chose something with similar tones. And I did the object selection tool around the bowl. All right. And then I did I ran the other two just by themselves. So when I did the object selection tool, it got part of the bowl, but as you saw, there were there was similar tones there. It, it would be very, very difficult for it'd be really difficult for anybody to, to make that selection, right? Any tool to make that selection. So it didn't do a great job there. Um, at this point, I stopped doing select subject and remove background because they were the same, but that's what select subject gave us. But then what I did do is I tried object selection over just the, the food in the photo, not the bowl. And it actually picked up more. It picked up a couple of the little crumbs around and picked up more lettuce that was around here. So it actually grabbed more. So in this case, I would say the object selection tool wins. Um, I think they both do okay on the edges. The object selection tool just seemed to grab a little bit more. And moving on from there, another interesting one where it didn't take everything is this one. So Again, if we want to see what we started with, I deliberately picked this. There's similar tones. There's there's no tool that's going to really do a perfect job at this. And I knew that going in. I, I expected I expected the tools to fail on this one because I knew that this would be it doesn't have a clean edge all over the place. There's a lot of similar you know tones and things. Um, but let's go run through here. I'll just show you really quick. So here's our object selection tool. Here's select subject. Again, remove background, same thing. So that that's lesson number one. Select subject and remove background basically do the same thing. Two different places, but they do the same thing. So we're really comparing the object selection tool, which left a little bit out, but then select subject grabbed a little bit too much of the rocks and everything down there. So, you know, I don't know that there's a clear winner in a case like this. I think the edge, I think the edge as far as both of them are concerned, look fine. I don't think the edge is any better or worse, the selection edge, whether it's, you know, uh, fringy or anything like that. I think it becomes now to a matter of what did a better job selecting things. Here's one where I didn't expect that to happen. And uh, so if you look at the original photo, I mean, there were some tones that run into each other, but I did not, I did not expect this to happen. So this was the object selection tool. It got most of it. All right, I just dragged around the whole guitar and it grabbed everything. 
and then there's a select subject and remove background and it missed a lot of it. So I did not expect that to happen because there, there's still a pretty clear line going around this stuff. I, I did not expect it to miss that. Only thing I can think of is maybe it's using some type of color and the colors of that background were too similar in a way to the tones there. Maybe that edge, that edge is screwing it up, that, that little uh, beveled edge around the guitar there. I don't know, but I, am, I, I was really surprised to see that one happen where the object selection tool uh, did a good job on it. All right, let's let's uh, let's wrap this up here. So I think, oh, the, and then just to do a simple one, and I thought this would be a good comparison to see um, to see the quality of the edge. All right, so I just did a very simple cup, coffee cup, and you can see what the before photo looked like. But I just wanted to really see what the quality was. And, and I think very, very few people would ever have a photo like this, right? I think more times than not, we are going to have a photo where we're going to have to do work afterwards. That's 95% of the time for me. Um, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see what it would do like on, a, on, on, on something where we expected it to work in one click. There's the object selection, there's select subject. They both look similar until we zoom in. And then we can get a better feel for the edge that happened. That's the object, or this is select subject. That's the object selection tool. So definitely more jaggy in its selection process. Um, you know, there's, it's probably grabbing little pixelated things. It could be the quality of the photo. It could be a number of things, but I just noticed an overall more of a jagginess to the object selection tools, selections versus select subject or uh, remove background, which tended to be a little bit smoother. Now, this is version one of the object selection tool. Select subject has now been enhanced a couple of times, so it's, it's definitely getting better, and the object selection tool may do that as well. So the, the last thing that I did here is, let's go open up a photo. I just wanted to see on, a, on a, a photo that was we would not expect it to work. I would not expect an automatic selection tool to work in a case like this because we've got dark hair, dark background, and no, there's no tool in the world that will pull dark hair off of a dark background. But I figured, hey, let's try it. Let's see what does a better job. Let's see what gets closer. So at first, I did my object selection tool and I went and I did that and I just dragged around the object and I didn't get, in fact, I, that's the other thing is, is it definitely matters what you do with it because I'm trying to, there we go. That's what I first got with it. So then I was like, all right, that's not so good. And then I went to select subject and select subject did a better job than I thought it would of grabbing the subject considering how many dark areas merge into other dark areas there. But then I went back and I, what happened to me just a second ago, I went back with the object selection tool and I was just a little bit more refined. I just didn't drag all the way to the edge and I was a little bit more careful. And I think that time it got it, but then it got some of this over here. So what's this all tell us? <laughs> They're all pretty darn close. I would say I'm favoring the select subject tool. That seems to be the one that, that's given me the, the best results and the cleanest edge. Um, if I have multiple subjects, yeah, maybe the object selection tool uh, if, if I'm having trouble. But, you know, honestly, if, if I have multiple objects or subjects in the photo, a lot of times I would just go to the quick selection tool and then just paint over the area that I want it to select and, and work from there. All right. But either way, they are super fast selection tools. If, if this does anything, in a way, it reaffirms it reaffirms my current selection process, which is for me personally, 95%, probably more, of the photos where I have to do a complex selection, it, it's, it's, it would never be done when I hit select subject or the object selection tool. It would never be done at that point. I would still have to do work. So for me, I usually use the quick selection tool where I can brush and basically paint a selection on. And it might take a few more seconds, but at least I know I get to point it at what I want to point it at. All right. And that 10, 15 extra seconds it takes me is not really going to hurt anything. If I had a thousand photos on perfectly selected backgrounds, yeah, maybe that 10 or 15 seconds to use one of the tools that does it automatically might help. But that's not my workflow. So I'm personally usually going to end up with the quick selection tool unless I just give select subject a try. But the quick selection tool with the select and mask dialog box, and I'll make sure uh, if all goes well in the YouTube world and the video world, 
the, the videos that I have on that will actually appear on the screen right now. If not, you can always check the description below to find out a little bit more about how I use those specific tools.